Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. A good topic? Let's do it. What's the strangest unsolved mystery? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. The murders of billionaires Barry and Honey Sherman found dead in their mansion in Toronto by their realtor. They were found with their necks tied, fully clothed on their pool deck with no signs of a break-in. While known philanthropists, Barry was in the pharmaceutical industry and they donated millions annually to multiple charities. The police originally believed it was a murder-suicide and didn't pursue other leads. The family launched a private investigation that found the evidence didn't support the theory and thus proved police incompetence. As the public became more interested, it was discovered there was a whole family dispute over inherited shares of the Apotex company. The Sherman's nieces and nephews had launched lawsuit over their right to inherit shares which they lost and most accepted. The Sherman's children hired private investigators because of the inept Toronto police. It uncovered an unknown man leaving the property around the time of the murders. The case is fascinating and the subject of multiple podcasts, a book, and a movie. The 169th victim of the Oklahoma City bombing. They found an additional leg in the rubble. DNA tests showed it belonged to another victim who had already been buried but with the wrong leg. The wrong leg had already been embalmed, so they could not get DNA at the time. So who did this leg belong to? All of the legs had been accounted for in other victims. They found no other body parts, and nobody else had been reported missing. It was only until 2015 they could get DNA from the leg, but it's still classified as a John Doe. A few conspiracy theories had popped up, like maybe a second bomber that got caught in the blast, but it's still unknown. There are many theories why Otzi, the ice mummy, man from the ice that died in 3200 BC in the glaciers of what now is Tyrol in Austria, was murdered. The cause of death was a shot to the back with an arrow, but there are many things that don't make sense. Like some people think it was his own hunting party that killed him because his stomach showed a big meal that someone would not be able to make when he'd been on the run. Still, the analysis shows that he tried to evade some pursuers. He got up and down in the mountains. He was in a melee fight not long before his death. There are many more things. Like the murderers left his very valuable copper axe behind, which doesn't make sense, as it was extremely expensive in this time. It was a high-tech tool and weapon. But even for that, there may be simple answers, like that the murderers could have been identified by the tribe if they had taken his personal items. Whoever killed him had a serious reason to track him down in that difficult terrain and try to keep up with his escape, but it wasn't about money in the way of a robbery to get the valuable items from him. Probably it was a conflict with his own men in the hunting party that set out to hunt some animals. One of the strangest unsolved mysteries that people often forget about is the disappearance of the Sodder children. On Christmas Eve in 1945, a fire destroyed the Sodder home in West Virginia. Five of the nine children were never found, and no remains were discovered in the ashes. Despite numerous theories and investigations, their fate remains unknown and the case is still surrounded by eerie questions and unexplained deaths. Houston, Texas, Lover's Lane Murders During the summer of 1990, 22-year-old Cheryl Henry met 21-year-old Andy Atkinson through friends at the Yucatan Liquor. Andy was home for the summer from Stephen F. Austin State University, and the two started dating. On August 22, 1990, the two, who had been dating now for around two weeks, had planned a double date with Cheryl's younger sister, Shane. Each couple went their separate ways to continue the night. Shane said she kissed her sister goodnight and told her, I love you, around 11.30 p.m. It was what they always did. But when Shane woke up in the morning, Cheryl still wasn't home. And over at Andy's house, he also hadn't returned home. Both families contacted the police. A search was conducted for the couple and the car they were in, Andy's white Honda Civic, in the early evening of August 23rd, Houston police located Andy's car after a guard who was doing a sweep of an industrial area called it in. It was parked in an isolated cul-de-sac on Enclave Road, 
an area often used as a lover's lane. When police approached the car, it was clear something awful had happened. The windows were rolled down. The key was still in the ignition. The seats were laid back and a cassette was in the dash. On the floorboard of the passenger side was a woman's shoes and purse, but most chillingly, there was fresh signs of blood in the car. Just before midnight, the dogs led police to an area roughly 200 yards from Andy's car. A golf club and three golf balls seemed to have been purposefully placed, pointing to pieces of a rotting cedar fence on the ground. Police looked under the pieces of fence and found the body of Cheryl. She was face down. Her clothes had been cut off and tossed near her remains. Her hands were bound behind her back with hemp rope. She had been SA'd and her throat was slashed with three gashes. Near her body was also a $20 bill. The search continued for Andy. The next morning, about 100 yards from Cheryl's body in the tree line, authorities discovered Andy's body. He was fully clothed with his back against the tree and his hands bound like Cheryl's. And like Cheryl, his throat had also been slashed. But the slash was so deep, he was nearly decapitated. His watch and money were still on his person, ruling out the possibility of robbery as the primary motive. After 32 years, the mystery is still unsolved. On December 4, 1872, a British-American ship called the Mary Celeste was found empty and drifting in the Atlantic. It was found to be seaworthy and with its cargo intact, except for a lifeboat, which it appeared to have been boarded in an orderly fashion. No one knows what happened to the crew or why they left the ship. The Story of the Watcher this house had a neighbor who would terrorize whichever resident lived there, sending creepy letters detailing specific things about the residents that you'd have to be next to the house and looking in to know. They never found out which neighbor it was. This is honestly one of the most creepiest still unsolved mysteries. The Hinterkaifeck murders happened in 1922 in a farming hamlet in Bavaria, Germany. On one farm, six family members were murdered most likely one by one in a barn by someone who may have been living in the walls of the house or maybe in the attic. Nobody's quite sure. A former employee who left the job, I think, a day before the murders, said she would notice things that didn't seem right and she had a bad feeling about the place. Aaron Manke's lore covered this in the first season podcast, and the story made it to the first season of the TV series on Amazon Prime. Totally worth it, 30 minutes or so. Mystery, creepiness, 10 out of 10. Stonehenge. I watched a thing on it fairly recently, and the theories that I grew up hearing have basically fallen out of favor, and that's happened multiple times over hundreds of years. We don't really know who built it or why, and it was in use for over a thousand years at minimum, and then basically had just forgotten about outside of the local area until fairly recently. The Temen should murder is so beyond bizarre, they think he was poisoned, but they don't know with what. They don't know who the guy was because he had no idea on him, and all his clothes had the tags ripped off. Then there's the brown suitcase. The fact that he was seen alive, I think, a full day earlier in the same spot they found his body. Oh and the strange number code they don't understand. They will generally think it has to do with some hardcore Cold War spy shit, but who knows? The stone spheres of Costa Rica, basically huge, huge spheres that no one has any effing clue who put them there, or perhaps more importantly, how? The Phoenix Lights. I'm not a big UFO nut, but this is just effing creepy. Thousands of people, including the governor, saw them. The governor, if memory serves, was a pilot, and when the government came out with their report, flares after the some type of plane, the governor, once out of office of course, called bullshit, no real explanation. The Ketty murders in 1981, Glenna Sharp, her son John, and his friend Dana were found beyond brutally murdered in Glenna's eldest daughter, Sheila. She found them, not murdered them. They had been staying in cabin 28 in the Ketty section. 
Sheila had stayed with her friends in cabin 27 and found the bodies in the morning. Her sister Tina was missing and her mommy's screams were later found some 28 miles away after an anonymous tip was called in. The twist here is that in cabin 28, there were also three small children found alive and unharmed in the bedroom. Most people on Reddit have probably heard about it, but Oak Island, also known as the Money Pit, is a pretty big mystery. In 1795, Daniel McGinnis of Nova Scotia saw lights coming from the uninhabited Oak Island, named because, well, it's full of oak trees. He and some friends went to the island and found a large circular depression, so they started digging and discovered a layer of flagstones a few feet below. On the pit walls were these visible markings from a pick. As they dug down, they discovered layers of logs every 10 feet. They gave up after about 30 feet. That's just the beginning. The Onslow company picked up where McGinnis and his friends left off, reaching a depth of 90 feet, finding layers of logs every 10 feet and layers of charcoal, putty, and coconut fiber at 40, 50, and 60 feet. It should be noted that coconuts and thus their fibers aren't native to anywhere near Nova Scotia. Somewhere between 80 and 90 feet, they found a coated rock that was translated saying something like, 40 feet down, 2 million pounds lie buried. This is getting long, so I'll TLDR it. The pit floods, and not like a, oh, we'll just pump out a water flood. The water comes in from three parts of the island with the tide. Many, many people and companies have tried to reach the bottom, but with no success. If interested, there's tons and tons of info on this. If people are interested in these, I've got like dozens more. This kind of shit has been a fascination of mine since I was around six years old. So let me know if you want more. What happened to Ireland's most beloved racehorse, Shurgar? It's widely believed that the IRA kidnapped him for ransom and ended up shooting him to death as he got too much to deal with. However, even long after ending their campaign, the IRA had been admitting to the kidnappings and killings of several people, especially in relation to the disappeared, but haven't mentioned Sugar once. Surely, they would have come out and claimed responsibility by now, if they were behind it. Did the Serbian farmer Dorde Martinovic get injured from a bottle up his arse in a failed masturbation attempt, or from an interrogation by two Albanian men. During May 1985, he was treated for injuries caused by the insertion of a bottle of his anus. Initially, he claimed that he was attacked by Albanians. While being interrogated, he stated that it was actually caused by him masturbating. The bizarre situation caused widespread controversy and contributed to worsening tensions between Kosovo Serbs and Albanians. He eventually reverted back to his original story that he was attacked. So I'm a little fuzzy on the story, but my mom's cousin was murdered in Washington in the early 80s. Her murder fit the MO of Gary Widgeway perfectly. However, it's one of the few that he denied he had done, which is odd because he took credit for a ton of murders he didn't do. He actually had a strong alibi the night she was murdered. It's still unsolved, but the theory is that family is that there was a copycat Green River killer. One of my uncles had gone down the rabbit hole for nearly 40 years and is convinced that there was another killer in the area and Gary Ridgway was actually the copycat. There's a conspiracy theory that John Wilkes Booth escaped the night he was supposedly shot and the person instead was a patsy made to look like him. And it's the patsy who's buried in Booth family plot. The living descendants of the Booth family want to have the body exhumed and have the DNA from the body in the family plot compared to the DNA of both pieces of vertebrae taken out when the autopsy happened, which the pieces are in a medical museum in D.C., and get DNA from the body of JWB's brother Edwin. The courts, however, have denied the request, so the question is just a conspiracy theory that someone else in the family grave, or is it really Booth himself?